Hey, what's up? It's MarketAlchemist.camp, where we learn Elixir and Phoenix by building things. Today, I'm going to continue the Ecto Basic series. This is for people who are new to using Elixir with databases, although maybe not new to databases or Elixir itself. Um, we are going to continue where we left off. So this is already the sixth episode. If you uh, are totally new to Ecto, definitely go back to the beginning and start from this playlist. Um, we have already gone through how to, well, what a repo is. It's basically your, uh, your intermediary between you and the database. Anytime you want to update anything in the database, you use the repo. And we've looked at using repo.query, which is lowercase, to, uh, to execute a raw SQL statement, such as here, repo.query, select star from users. We've also looked at repo.all and repo.one to directly execute a, a query. So see here. We have a query called user2 and one called get Bob, and they look kind of SQL-ish, but this is, uh, this is Ecto's domain-specific language for doing queries. We can execute those queries with repo.1 and repo.all. Repo.1 accepts any sort of query that will return zero or one results. Repo.all can have many results. And then we also looked at the batch actions, which can be used even if you don't have a schema, like repo.insertAll, where we're inserting all of this data, or re repo.updateAll, for example, here was a query to find every single user in the database with the username of Sam. Of course, there was only one, but... Uh, or every single user with username of Bob, there's only one, and then update all of those users with you know, this change, which changed the email address from, I believe from Bob at example.com to Robert at example.com. Then after that, we went through uh, single queries like repo.insert, repo.update, repo.delete, and these work with schemas, and they also automatically handle timestamps. So you'll notice up here in the batch inserts, I had to manually add timestamps. In the singular inserts, like repo.insert here, inserting a user with a username and an email specified, and an about, but no time, no timestamps are specified at all. So uh, it just automatically adds them. And if we had change sets, it would also automatically run those change set validations before inserting any data. And ditto for repo.update. Then today we're going to go over some other really useful repo commands. And we're also going to make a few little updates to this example query script. So First thing is, since we're going to be working with all of these schemas, instead of just aliasing users, let's also alias the other ones. We'll get bookmark and we'll get uh, link, link tag, and tag, as well as user. We'll save this. Now this script assumes that there's nothing in the database. This is actually how we're populating the database. So let's drop the database, and then we'll try running it again. So mix ecto.drop completely gets rid of the database. Mix ecto.create creates the database from scratch. Then we'll start IEX, IEX-S mix. There's no Phoenix in this project, so just mix, not mix phoenix.server. Now that we're running the REPL again, we can uh, we can import underscore file and then give it the name of this file, which is in the same directory we are, and it just called example underscore queries 
exe.exs. And it should run all of them. Oh, it can't though, because uh, even though we have the database, we don't have the tables we need. So let's run mix ecto dot migrate, which will run all of these migrations to create the tables and set everything up that we previously had. All right, now we load up IEX again and we run import file with that extension. So now everything is in the database. And as we've already done before, we just bump up the font size a little bit more. Now we can run repo.all user to get all of our users. We can see here we have a user with username Bob. We could run repo.1 user, actually repo.1 from user where I, uh, where username is Bob. And we still get Bob. Now there's some more convenient repo functions we can use. So instead of doing it that way, we could use one that's called repo.get. And this is pretty much what you'll see in any Phoenix context. You'll see people using repo.get again and again and again. There are two forms of it. There's a repo.get without the exclamation point and then one with it. Basically repo.get with an exclamation point will return an error or it'll throw an error if it's not successful. So let's just start with repo.get. We pass it the schema and then we pass it the ID. So let's get user ID number one and we can see we have Alice. Now, if, uh, if there were no user, so say we go for user ID 12, just returns nil, no error is thrown. If we want to ensure that the user must be there, we can do this and now we get an ecto.no result error. If we didn't have, or if we use repo.get bang, where there is a user, the result is just the same as a normal repo.get. Now, similarly, we can use repo.insert with or without an exclamation point. With it, we'll return or we'll throw an error if the particular record can't be inserted. Another thing that we can use or that's extremely useful is if you want to get any record by anything other than the ID, you can use repo get by. For example, one of the uh, one of the bookmarks that we've already put in the database has the title IH. Let's look at the example queries up here. So one of the bookmarks has a title IH and uh, we might not know what ID this was. We have, you know, we have the information that's here in this list. But if we don't know what the ID is, it, it's much harder to find it. So what we can do is repo.get by, then we specify which field we want to get by. So for, or first is the schema. So bookmark, then the field that we want is title IH. By bookmark title IH. Ecto queryable is not implemented for bookmark of type Adam. I believe we have a schema for bookmark. We do. That's very strange. Oh, bookmark isn't aliased. That's what happened. So let's look at our script, our example entries, linkly.bookmark. 
alias linkly dot bookmark. And there we go. So now we should be able to repo it at all to get all of them and repo dot get by to just get the one with the title IH. So uh, that is the main stuff that we we'll use all the time. Get, get, bang, update, update, bang, insert, insert, bang, then delete, which we already covered. There are quite a few other functions in uh, in Ecto repo though. If you want to check them out, just go to the official docs, just Google ecto.repo and then go down to callbacks and you'll see all the things here. Uh, aggregate, I guess I can throw a quick example in. Um, so for aggregates, um, that's basically any kind of query that's looking at an aggregate of all the items in a table or in a range. So uh, for example, if you had a lot of different statistics, you could get an average of them. In our case, none of the, uh, none of the items here have anything numerical. So let's just do a count. And I've got an example query right at the bottom here. From B in bookmark, where B that link ID is one, we'll do an aggregate on that query. Look, uh, it'll be a count. So this could be this could specify average or um, anything that's built into the library. You can check the docs for more information. And this is the field we're going to be aggregating. Now, if you're just counting the number of entries, it doesn't matter which field you pick. So I picked ID. Before running this, let's just look at bookmark, at all of the bookmarks first. So repo.all bookmark. So we see we have four bookmarks. And uh, this one is user ID one, user ID two, user ID two, and user ID one. So if we're aggregating all the bookmarks with user ID one, oh, with link ID, okay, so link ID one, then we'll have two. So let's give that a try. And with user ID, it should also be one. Yeah, so we got two of them. And if we specified user ID to be one, we have the same result, whereas if we'd specified user ID of four, which is Sam, who was just added, we don't have any because he hasn't bookmarked anything. Um, another thing that's useful is repo.exists. You won't see this a whole lot, but if you want to know if there are any entries at all in a table, you can repo.exists and we'll try user. Yes, there are users about repo.exist link tag. No, we haven't added any tags to the database yet. That's pretty much it for today. Next time we will go over how to set up associations. Till then, code on.